I can give you for the young man at the piano is that he looks exactly like his father, who also happens to be a pretty good pianist in the modern jazz field himself. What always affected me adversely was the expectation that as Dave Brubeck's son, I would just automatically be really good. Whatever I did should be at least above average. I had to kind of try to be better, even if I knew really I wasn't. So I guess I had some insecurities. South Africa in the 80s was quite a dangerous place. Uh, there was a lot of social upheaval, there was a lot of riots, a lot of protesting, etc. It was tough. There was kind of a low-grade civil war going on. There are places that were no go for us. And if you got stopped in a roadblock, for an example, by police, they want to know where you're coming from and what you're doing. What is the problem with us socially? Why was this such a difficult thing for people to mix and to integrate? This idea of so-called separate development eventually began to affect music as well. There were sanctions in place, there were fines, so that was a high-stakes game. Back then, you could not be in the same stage with the person of another color. And that was the environment that Darius came into. Uh, it's an unlikely hero, if you will. You're talking about Dave Brubeck's son right now. Right. He's doing some remarkable things in South Africa with uh, some students. What we were doing in the 80s and early 90s that was illegal is suddenly the model of what everyone should do. People wanted so desperately to break out of a apartheid mold. What Darius managed to do here was to set up what has become the finest jazz school on the entire continent. You just couldn't contain this energy that was South Africa. It's just, just a group of friends with great ideas just wanted to play music. So in a way, it was nearly a quarter of a century of improvisation.